Some 3D printers can make quite a bit of noise when printing. This is largely down to vibration sourced at the stepper motors and is based on the stepper driver choice and the amount of micro stepping as well as obviously frame structure and all this kind of stuff. But when designing an ultimate 3D printing workbench where we want some anti-noise or anti-vibration features, we need to be a bit considerate of how that works to make sure we can reduce the noise from the printing and not accidentally increase it. So let's take a closer look at how that works. Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking another look at the 3D printing workbench and the more observant among you might have noticed that the pegboard is missing. Don't worry, it's not broken or anything, it's just not fitted at the moment. Firstly, before we get onto anything else, I do want to thank everyone who's left feedback on the previous video, either via the form in the description or in the comments. There was lots of great feedback, so thank you everyone who did that. Today we're going to be taking a look at two things. Firstly, how we mount the worktop to the rest of the frame, as well as the lower shelf and upper shelf, which will use the same system. And secondly, the anti-vibration design and how that concept is going along, what I've tried, what I've tested, and what hasn't worked quite so well yet. Mounting the worktop to the rest of the frame has gone through quite a number of iterations and changes as the focus has moved between cost and efficiency, anti-vibration, and kind of back around again in circles. So, the first thing I looked at doing is really very, very simple. Taking countersunk screws with a hammer nut going through the worktop surface and into the top of the extrusion. This had some advantages and disadvantages. Firstly, it's very cost effective. All you need is screws and nuts straight through the top into the frame. Very, very simple, but not that easy to do. Countersinking into wood just doesn't seem to be the done thing. I'm no expert when it comes to woodwork by any means, so Maybe I'm interpreting this wrong, but it seems like people just don't do it. It's not that easy to get consistently, certainly on a kind of professional level. All the suppliers I looked at were having to drill holes and cut profiles, but nobody wanted to do any countersink. So I kind of avoided that from there. The second method I've been looking at is these brackets. Again, very similar to what we would be using to assemble the frame, but you have to rotate them 90 degrees in order to mount perpendicular to the frame instead of parallel. The downside of that is that these have the kind of flange profile things on them in order to fit square into the extrusion to try and help with the assembly process. Well, they don't really work that well for that process. They're actually a major hindrance when we're trying to use it to mount the worktop. They are actually designed to be snapped off into a profile that's then flat, but this is a absolute pain to do. It takes forever. You're probably gonna hurt yourself in the process. If not, you're gonna have aching hands, all this kind of stuff. It's just not worth the amount of effort when there are probably simpler solutions available. When using those brackets, obviously that's not the whole solution because a bracket itself doesn't hold to the worktop or to the frame. So we need a solution for both of those. For mounting to the frame, we have a couple of options. Firstly being a nut, sorry, a bolt with a T-nut, hammer nut, very standard. We all know how these work at this point. The other method is to do it kind of the other way around. So you have the hammer the hammer nut becomes ooh, the hammer nut becomes a screw, so you have the thread poking up from the profile, and you put a flange nut on the top, and that holds down. In terms of advantages and disadvantages using the standard solution versus the kind of opposite solution with the flange nut, I'm not really sure what the major advantages and disadvantages are of each. They both seem very similar in terms of assembling in this style. You could argue that the um, the hammer screw is a bit easier to assemble into the bracket before putting it to the frame, but is pretty marginal. So really not much difference between the two. So of course, now we need to look at the other half of the bracket, if you like, the part that's attaching to the worktop. The worktop's designed to be either MDF or plywood or some type of wood. So we're looking at wood-based fixings in order to attach to the bracket and therefore the frame. So the first way I looked at is just kind of your standard wood screws, which are all right. They do obviously attach very well to wood. Downsides are that most typically they're countersunk. So you'd have to have a weird like countersunk washer if you want to do it well, or just maybe a flange washer would be fine. They do work in terms of holding the worktop down, but they're not very good for kind of repeatability. In other words, you could only use the same hole so many times before 
kind of gets a bit mangled and doesn't work quite as well as it did. Especially if you start crossing the threads, it just is not so great anymore. At that point, I wanted to look at something that would be a bit more consistent over time. So we have something like this, which is a threaded insert. If you've done lots of 3D printing and assembly of printed parts together, you might have come across threaded inserts that are used in plastic parts. In this case, you drill a hole of the specified diameter and then you screw the threaded insert in. The threads on the insert are kind of a weird shape and that helps it lock into the wood. Once you've done that, you've just then got the thread for the rest of it. It's quite easy to fit and quite easy to do. You just have to be careful not to drill all the way through the worktop because that would be a bit of an unsightly mess. The method I finally settled on for testing primarily is these kind of large angled brackets with the threaded inserts into the wood and the standard hammer nut and hex screw to hold the other side. While the angle brackets do work quite well, they might be a little bit overkill for what I'm trying to do. So I decided to get some folded sheet metal brackets made, which would be suitable for what I need. The advantage is they are much lighter, probably easier to ship. They're quite low cost as long as you have lots of them and they're just as easy to assemble. And of course we can make them specific dimensions to do specific features, depending on what else we need to integrate. So at the moment I am testing both of these brackets in combination, some on the top, some down below. So on the lower shelf, some on the main workshop, just to see how they work over time, which ones have problems and which ones don't. So no set decision on exactly which are going to be used yet, but those are the two I'm taking a look at. So obviously all the methods we've talked about up to now rigidly fix the worktop to the frame. For many people that's probably sufficient and would be the most cost effective way to assemble the worktop to the frame. But if you want some anti-vibration you need to integrate some sort of isolation or soft material in there in order to isolate the vibration of the machine from the worktop or the machine and worktop from the rest of the frame and anything else. The first thing I've looked at doing is using bobbins. So that's these sorts of things literally a rubber cylinder with threads on either end. By assembling these into the brackets like this between the worktop and the, the bracket, we're kind of isolating the whole worktop from the rest of the frame. As you can see, there's now a gap between the worktop and the rest of the frame. The advantage of this method is that you don't really need to upgrade or change anything in order to add bobbins to an already existing assembly. So for example, if you already had all these brackets and you've been using it for six months, you've got this screwed to the worktop, you could just buy a set of bobbins, add them into the gap where the screw was, bolt on one side, screw the other side into the worktop, and that's it. Upgrade done, nice and dandy, easy peasy. The downside is that they didn't really work quite in the way I'd hoped. So what went wrong when using bobbins? Well, from my testing, it seems that while they do work, functionally they're doing exactly what they're meant to, they don't reduce noise. The reason being, they're fitted in between the worktop and the frame. This means the worktop is now free to wobble on its own, but the frame won't. The downside of that is that the worktop, now that it's not rigidly fixed to the frame, is much more flexible because it doesn't have the frame to support it. When you put a printer onto the worktop, which is now free to kind of move and vibrate on its own, it basically becomes a speaker. So basically what's happening is you've got your 3D printer being the driver, the worktop being the speaker, and it basically makes lots of noise. In reality, the noise difference is not actually very big. It's quite slight and depending on where you are in the house, it actually seems to have a more positive or less effect. If you're in the same room, it sounds louder. If you're somewhere else, it sounds quieter. But there you go. It's quite a complicated situation, it looks like. So the first design that I had is not gonna work. At the moment, I am looking at a couple of different methods where we could still integrate anti-vibration into the base design, but it looks like this is not going to be it. If you have any suggestions of how you think we can do anti-vibration in a cost-effective way that we can add to the design, of course, don't forget to leave your feedback below. So obviously the anti-vibration design is not complete yet, but I'm confident I'll be able to find something that's cost-efficient and will be able to work well with our 3D printers to reduce the noise from that vibration. So that's going to be it from me today. If you have any comments and feedback regarding mounting methods for the worktop to the frame, or for anti-vibration methods, of course, leave them in the feedback form, which is in the description, or in the comment section, it's up to you. For now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.